Compliance Conversations is a free series from wateroperator.org with expert insights on operating and managing a small public water system. I think there's a, there's a lot of things that resources available. Technical assistance providers uh, from RCAP are a great resource. Um, states usually have someone that within their state department, you know, state offices that can do um, some sort of technical assistance capacity development. So I think there are opportunities on the technical assistance provider side. Um, one thing that we really encourage in all of our training is networking. So when a small system operator comes to one of our training, we really encourage them to share their business card with another small system operator. Uh, we did a, a training on leak detection. And no small system can afford leak detection equipment, or very few can afford that. Sure. But they could share that resource. And so there's abilities to be able to share resources to be able to do that. The gel standard for calibration of the colorimeter, the 300 bucks, and you have to do it depending on your system monthly to quarterly to be able to check the, the calibration of your instrument. And we've encouraged systems to get together and buy that so they can share resources. Um, the other thing is, is small communities being in contact with the larger utilities. Larger utilities sometimes will help some of the smaller communities with their operators. Um, there, there are opportunities for that. For emergency response, there is the, the WARN network. In the event of an emergency, a small system can, or any system can post, I have this need, and other systems can, can quickly respond to that need. So taking advantage of some of those things are really pretty valuable. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be the first to hear about new videos. And remember, regulations don't have to stress you out. WaterOperator.org is a collaboration between the Rural Community Assistance Partnership and the University of Illinois through the Illinois State Water Survey, with funding from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. The views expressed here are solely from the presenters and are not endorsed or reviewed by the U.S. EPA.